Today, we gather to revisit a monumental moment in sporting history, the 1971 bout between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. Let me introduce our panel of legendary figures, each a titan in their own right, who will delve into the depths of this historic fight and its reverberations through time. Glad to be here, and let's not mince words. The early 70s were a time of turmoil and triumph, much like the defensive battles on the basketball court. It's about strategy, resilience. This fight, it was more than just punches. Ah, the art of rivalry, something I know a bit about. Ali and Frazier, their psychological warfare, it was akin to standing at the plate, staring down the pitcher, except here the whole nation was watching, picking sides. They certainly didn't hold back in or out of the ring. It reminds me of the pressures in tennis, where every serve, every return is a battle of wills. But let's not forget the impact beyond the sport on women, on minorities. In football, it's the teamwork that shines. But in boxing, it's the individual's spirit, their preparation. Ali and Frazier showed the world the pinnacle of physical and mental preparation. Indeed, Pele. And from the golf course, I've seen how individual battles, much like this fight, inspire generations. The mental strength Ali showed, it's something all athletes aspire to. Each of you brings a unique perspective to this discussion. Let's explore these themes further, understanding not just the fight itself, but its broader impact on sports and society. Right, let's dive into the heart of the matter. The early 70s were a tumultuous time, teeming with political and social unrest. Bill, your experience on and off the court during this era was significant. How do you see this backdrop impacting the public perception of Ali and Frazier? You know, back in those days, we weren't just athletes. We were symbols, beacons of hope or despair, depending on which side of the fence you were on. Ali, with his refusal to be drafted, became an inadvertent political figure. Frazier, though less vocal, was caught in this narrative. It wasn't just a fight, it was symbolic warfare where racial tensions and political beliefs spilled over into the ring. We weren't just playing games or fighting matches, we were fighting for ideals, for change. I'll jump in here. It wasn't just a racial or political battle, but also a cultural one, affecting women and minorities. Each punch thrown by Ali or Frazier was magnified by the media, becoming a symbol of the struggle or triumph for various groups watching. It's not just about sports. It's about the impact those sports have on the broader societal canvas. You're talking symbols and impacts, but let's not put aside the sheer rivalry here. The media played its part, sure, but Ali and Frazier, they brought out the best and worst in each other, and that's what rivalry is all about. When I was hitting homers, I know I wasn't just swinging a bat, I was challenging norms. But these two, they changed the game and the world's view on it. Precisely, babe. But it's critical to note how this rivalry wasn't just about sportsmanship, but intertwined deeply with where America was politically and socially. And beyond just America, Bill, the impact was global. Women, even in tennis, drew inspiration from such battles. It gave us a platform, a voice, in the ongoing narrative of gender equality in sports. In the world of football, the physical preparation and mental toughness required are immense. But what Ali and Frazier were fighting for, what they represented, was a different kind of strength. It's the courage to stand for your beliefs against any opponent in or out of the ring. That's true, Pelé. Mental strength in golf is about focusing on your game amid distractions. Ali's psychological warfare tactics, his ability to get inside Frazier's head, it was a game changer. It was as much about outthinking your opponent as it was about outboxing them. Marvelous points all around. The Ali Frazier rivalry transcended the bounds of the boxing ring, mirroring and impacting the socio political landscape of the time. It wasn't merely a fight, it was a reflection of society a moment when the world of sports and the reality of life collided with unforgettable consequences. Let's delve into the pre-fight psychological warfare between Ali and Frazier. The mind games were as fierce as the physical matches. Ali was a master at this, but what's your take on how it played out? Ali knew the game beyond the fists. It wasn't just about throwing punches. It was about getting inside Frazier's head. 
In basketball, we see it all the time. Mental resilience can win games even before they start. Ali's taunts, his poetry, they weren't just for show. They were calculated moves to destabilize Frazier. But let's not kid ourselves. Baseball's seen its fair share of mind games. Pitchers and batters trying to outwit each other. Ali was doing the same, but the stakes were his body and legacy. He wasn't just playing for points. He was fighting for history. That's what separates the good from the legendary. Mental fortitude is paramount in golf, too. Every shot requires precision, and a disturbed mind can send the ball veering off course. Ali's approach was innovative, sure, but it was more than that. It was revolutionary. Psychological warfare in sports isn't new, but Ali turned it into an art form. All of you talk about the mental game as if it's just strategy, but there's a deeper narrative here. Ali was fighting societal battles outside of the ring, battles against racism and injustice. His words weren't just to unnerve Frazier, they were to assert his identity in a world trying to suppress it. Exactly, Margaret. It wasn't just talk. Every word from Ali carried the weight of his convictions. He used his platform in ways athletes today can only imagine. It was beyond psychology. It was a statement. Statements or not, let's not forget he called Frazier ignorant, ugly, a gorilla. Hard to see how that's anything but personal. If I'd pulled something like that in baseball, I'd expect a fastball to the head next time I was up to bat. That's just it, babe. It was all personal because for Ali, everything was personal. His fight, his career, his legacy. It was all on his terms. His mental warfare wasn't just to win a fight. It was to win the narrative of his life. Interesting points all around. It's clear that Ali's psychological tactics were multifaceted, resonating across different sports and societal issues. Perhaps it's this complexity that cements his legacy, not just in boxing, but in the annals of sporting history. Let's pivot to the evolution of boxing technique and strategy since the 70s, a period that radically transformed the pugilistic landscape. Pelé, from a footballer's perspective, how do you see physical training and strategy having evolved in sports generally? In football, as in boxing, the game has become faster, more strategic. Back in my days, we relied heavily on natural talent and intuitive play. Today, there's a scientific approach to physical training, diet, and psychology. It's not just about having skill, but enhancing it through technology and a deeper understanding of human physiology. That's all fine and dandy for football, but boxing's a different beast. Ali and Frazier had raw power, innate talent. You can't just teach that or cook it up in some laboratory. Sure, today's fighters might be more calculated thanks to technology, but do they have the same heart, the same drive? Babe, I must disagree there. The heart, the drive, that's a constant across eras. What has changed is how we harness and refine it. Look at basketball. The techniques, the strategies have evolved. It's the same in boxing. Ali and Frazier were ahead of their time using psychological tactics and their understanding of the opponent's weaknesses. Today, we build on that with rigorous analysis of fights, opponent tendencies, and so on. Golf, much like boxing, requires a strong mental game. Ali's psychological strategies were pioneering. Nowadays, athletes across sports use psychologists and mental conditioning coaches. The mental game has certainly evolved, but the foundation was laid by folks like Ali. It all boils down to adaptability. Modern athletes adapt to advancements in science and technology. Those who don't, well, they're left behind. Ali and Frazier, they were adapters of their time. Adaptability is one thing, but the essence of sport should remain pure. Today, with all this focus on analytics and technology, aren't we running the risk of losing the human element? The unpredictability, the passion, the agony, and the ecstasy? Margaret's hitting a home run there. It's that unpredictability, that raw emotion, that draws the crowds. Not some cold, calculated move engineered in a training lab. But isn't mastering the technical aspects, pushing the boundaries of human performance, also a testament to our spirit, to our relentless pursuit of greatness? True, Bill. The evolution doesn't dim the human element, it amplifies it. Ali and Frazier, with their intense rivalry, showcase the pinnacle of what it means to be a competitor. Their spirit is what lives on and inspires. So, it appears the consensus is that while sports' technical and strategic aspects have evolved, 
Fundamentally, it's the human spirit, the raw emotion and passion of athletes like Ali and Frazier that continue to define the essence of competition. The media's role in sports elevates a fight from a mere bout to a spectacle, a phenomenon. The Ali Frazier fight was no exception. Media's influence, however, is a double-edged sword. Babe, your thoughts? Let me tell you, the attention might have been overwhelming for some, but Ali, like me, thrived under the spotlight. We weren't just athletes, we were showmen. The media built us into legends, but it was our job to live up to the hype, in the ring and on the field. But it's a relentless pressure. Not everyone's cut out for it. I agree with Babe to an extent. The media does create legends, but in golf, the story is often about the course, the conditions, not just the players. In boxing, Ali and Frazier's pre-fight banter was as much a part of the spectacle as the fight itself, thanks to the media's appetite for a narrative. It's innovative, yes, but it adds a layer of mental warfare that's unparalleled. The strategy behind the media's involvement is crucial. Bill, from a strategic perspective, how do you think this media buildup influenced the fight? Strategy isn't just about how you play the game. It's also about how you control the narrative. Ali was a master at this. He understood the psychological game better than most. By turning the media into his playground, he controlled the public's perception, turning pressure into motivation. It wasn't just about boxing. It was a chess match played on a global scale. While strategic use of media can play to an athlete's advantage, let's not gloss over the negative impact. The pressure, the constant scrutiny, it can be destructive. Especially today, with athletes' every move being analyzed, it's a different kind of warfare, one that not only fights to win over public opinion, but often struggles to preserve an athlete's mental health. In football, the story is the game itself, the beauty of the play, the skill. Media highlights that, yes, but it doesn't create the game. The difference in boxing, and specifically with Ali and Frazier, is that their fights became larger than life because of the narrative spun around them. It made the fight not just about a title, but about ideologies, personality clashes. It made it memorable, but at what cost? At the cost of immortality, if you ask me. Look, the media's job is to sell the fight, and nobody sold a fight like Ali. He made sure you cared whether you loved him or hated him. And yeah, it's a circus, but that's sports. It's entertainment. It's business. We all knew that signing up. It's business, sure, but at the heart of it, it's still a sport. The focus should be on the athletic prowess, the dedication. When media narratives overshadow the game, we risk losing the essence of what makes sports truly great. Indeed, the media shapes legends but it's the athlete's spirit and skill that resonate through history. Whether through stories spun in newsprint or tales told around a fire, it's the essence of the athlete, the struggle, the triumph that captivates us. Kicking off, the physical and mental preparation for high stakes matches has always separated the greats from the merely good. Margaret, how crucial was your regimen in tennis? Discipline, it's all about discipline. You wake up thinking about your game and you go to bed with it. My regimen was everything. If you're not dedicating every fiber of your being to your sport, you're not aiming to be the best. And that's the truth, whether people like to hear it or not. Absolutely, Margaret. In football, it's the same. The World Cup? It's not just another match. It's months, years of preparation, of sacrifice. And yes, it's not just physical. Your mind must be as fit as your legs. You visualize the goals before you even step on the pitch. Hold on there, friends. Let's not overlook the importance of natural talent. I've seen players, boxers, baseball stars, all sorts. Some had the strictest routines, and yet on the day they folded. Talent, you either have it or you don't. All the preparation in the world can't make up for that spark. Talent, yes, babe, but mental strength? That's the clincher. I've seen golfers, brilliant talents, crumble under pressure. Ali, he understood that. He worked his opponents long before the fight. The mind game was his arena, too. If you aren't mentally tough, no amount of physical training will save you. You're missing a fundamental point. It's not just about the individual's preparation. It's about how you adapt, how you read the game, or the fight in Ali and Fraser's case. 
Strategy evolves. You learn, you analyze your opponent. It's a chess match. Raw talent and preparation are fundamental, but how you apply it moment to moment, that's key. And let's not forget the impact of setbacks on your mental fortitude. Everyone here has faced them. It's about how you bounce back. Without resilience, you're finished. True, resilience defines champions. Look at Ali's career. His resilience was unmatched. Preparing for a high stakes match means preparing to overcome adversity. Bingo Pelé. Still, give me a naturally gifted player with a decent work ethic over a workhorse any day. Babe, it's not that black and white. You need the work ethic to harness that natural talent. Look at any sport. The legends are those who worked to refine their talent. Exactly, Arnold. It's about the synergy between talent, work ethic, and crucially, the ability to mentally pivot in the face of the unexpected. That's the hallmark of greatness in sports. Striking points all around. It's clear that preparation for athletes spans the physical, the mental, and the strategic. Each of you, in your own way, has embodied these principles, achieving greatness through a blend of discipline, mental fortitude, and indeed, natural talent. Let's turn our focus to the global impact of the Ali Frazier fight. Arnold, golf is a world unto itself, but how do you see such significant events affecting global sports? Significant events like Ali versus Frazier, they're lighthouses. They shine, guiding not just the passionate followers of a sport, but the global audience towards a deeper appreciation. In golf, we've had our moments, but nothing parallels the seismic shift that this bout caused. It's the drama, the human endeavor, stretching beyond the ropes of the ring into the hearts of millions worldwide. That's the thing, Arnold. It's not just about the event itself, but what it represents. Ali and Frazier, they were gladiators, embodiments of their era's struggles and triumphs. In basketball, we fight our battles on the court, but it's the same principle. These events, they bridge divides, knitting together the fabric of societies, bringing us into a collective breath. Now hold on, Russell. It ain't just about bringing folks together. It's about the grit, the sweat. Look at baseball. Every pitch, hit, and catch underlines the individual's battle against odds. Ali versus Frazier, that was about proving who's the mightiest amidst all the social turmoil. It ain't just a unifier, it's a testament to human spirit's dogged persistence. True, each sport tells its own story of resilience and skill. In football, it's the dance of the ball, the strategy, and the sudden bursts of genius that enchant the world. What Ali and Frazier did was artistry in motion, a ballet of fists, a drama that captivated not just boxing fans, but anyone who appreciates peak human endeavor. While we celebrate the drama and the spectacle, don't forget the personal cost, the toll on the athletes. Boxing, like tennis, is a lonely sport. Out, it's just you, relying on your preparation, mental and physical. Ali and Frazier, they laid it all on the line. That's the beauty and the brutality of it. Their fight didn't just elevate boxing. It spotlighted the utter dedication needed in any sport to reach such zeniths. And speaking of preparation, the technological advancements since then in training, nutrition, physiotherapy have revolutionized how athletes prepare today. Still, the essence remains the same, pushing the human body and mind to their absolute limits. Absolutely, Arnold. It's that evolution in preparation and strategy that fascinates me. Ali and Frazier, they were pioneers, charting courses that today's athletes still navigate. The legacy isn't just in their fight, but how they prepared, how they strategized. Legacy, strategy, sure. But let's not sugarcoat it. It was their heart, their sheer will to win. That's their true legacy. That's something no amount of technology or strategy can replace. It's what separates the greats from the legends. And in the end, it's that indomitable spirit seen through Ali and Frazier, which continues to inspire across all sports, across all generations. Let's talk about what happens after the final blow is struck. The crowd's roar dims and the fighters retreat from the limelight. Ali and Frazier, once titans in the ring, faced not just physical, but profound emotional battles post-fight. How does such a high-caliber confrontation shape, perhaps even dictate, the path of an athlete's career thereafter? A high-stakes match like Ali versus Frazier 
It's more than a physical battle. It's a crucible for the soul. Look, in tennis, after a grand slam loss, you doubt every decision, every swing. For Ali and Frazier, though their paths diverged, the fight was a mirror reflecting their deepest strengths and vulnerabilities. Athletes are thrown into self-reflection, contemplation. It's about grappling with the question, what do I have left? Margaret's right about the self-reflection, but let's not gloss over the societal impact. Post Ali Frazier, Ali, embroiled in his fight for racial justice, became more than an athlete. He was a symbol of resistance, resilience. Your career trajectory doesn't just get influenced by wins or losses. It's how you align yourself with causes greater than the game. It's how you stand up again and again that defines you. Let's not forget the pure, unadulterated resilience it takes to make a comeback. Both men faced their own hells after that fight. Ali, coming off a loss, didn't just sit back. He went on to become the first three-time heavyweight champion. That's grit. In baseball, I've seen slumps that look like they'd last forever, but it was always about that next swing. Life, like sport, keeps moving. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Absolutely, in football, it's the same. You lose a World Cup, and it feels like the weight of the entire country is on your back. Ali, Frazier, they carried the weight of whole communities, ideologies even. The way they fought, lived, and even faced defeats, it teaches us about overcoming, about persisting. It's more than physical prowess, it's mental fortitude. Look, gentlemen and lady, it's also about understanding the longevity of a career. Ali, Frazier, they didn't let one match define them. In golf, careers are long. It's about how well you adapt and overcome. Their careers post-fight, a testament to their unwavering ability to adapt, to change tactics, to evolve. Evolve, sure, but at what cost? We talk about their resilience, their comebacks, but the physical toll on them, on all athletes, it's immense. Post-career, we're left with the scars, the pains. Ali's battles in and out of the ring left him a hero, yes, but one must ponder, at what price heroism? The price of heroism is always steep. The public doesn't see the mornings we can hardly walk, the nights filled with pain. Ali Frazier, they paid their dues, yet their spirits remained unbroken. It's this spirit that defines a true athlete's legacy. There's a profound truth in struggle in the aftermath. It's clear, the legacy of Ali and Frazier, their journeys, struggles, victories, and defeats, they echo beyond the confines of the boxing ring, teaching us lessons applicable far outside the realms of sport. Let's dive into the enduring legacy of Ali versus Frazier and its influence on modern boxing. Pele, how do you see such iconic events shaping the future of athletes? In sports, outstanding events define the path for those who follow. Ali versus Frazier was more than a fight. It set a benchmark for physical and psychological preparation. It's about the mindset, how you approach the game beyond the physical. In football, we learn from such confrontations, striving not just for skill, but for the mental fortitude that separates the good from the legendary. Hold on, Pele. While I agree on the influence, let's not gloss over the raw competition that drives sports forward. Ali and Frazier pushed each other to their limits because they knew no other way. It was their rivalry that made the fight legendary. In baseball, hitting a home run off a top pitcher or coming back from a slump, that's what defines a career. It's not just about being a good sport. It's about beating the best. True, babe. But it's also about how these legends inspire the next generation. I see young golfers not just mimicking swings, but adopting the attitudes of their predecessors. The legacy of Ali and Frazier is not just in their technique, but in their courage, their resilience. That's what I try to instill in every young golfer I meet, the spirit, not just the swing. I find the discussion on inspiration a bit idealistic. What Ali and Frazier did was to show the brutal reality of boxing. Today's boxers look back not just for inspiration, but for lessons on what to emulate and what to avoid. Modern training methods, psychological preparation, and even how athletes manage their careers off the field owe a lot to these pioneers. It's a mixed legacy fraught with both cautionary tales and inspirational sagas. And let's not forget the evolving role of women and minorities in sports sparked partially by such groundbreaking events. Today's female athletes owe a debt to the breakthroughs of the past, not in terms of recognition, 
but in the fight for equality. Ali and Frazier's fight in its era broke barriers and opened discussions that are still relevant today. This roundtable itself proves the unmatched legacy of Ali versus Frazier, with each of you bringing such diverse perspectives. Their fight transcended boxing, impacting sports psychology, training, and even societal views on athletes. The debate around their legacy, both cautionary and inspirational, suggests that their influence will be felt for generations to come. Moving to a crucial aspect that shapes the very foundation of sports, the promoters and the financial dynamics of organizing majestic battles like the fight of the century. Arnold, how critical do you see the role of promoters in elevating a sport to global prominence? Promoters are the linchpins, if you will. Without them, even the grandest of matches are but mere whispers in the wind. It's their vision that transforms a duel into a spectacle witnessed by millions. Golf, for instance, owes much to its visionaries who turned it from a pastime into a global competition. But let's not kid ourselves. It's not just about the love of the game. It's as much about the dollars as it is about the drive. Dollars, sure, but it's the heart, the passion that draws the crowd. Look at baseball. The Sultan of Swat here didn't just swing a bat. I was a spectacle, a narrative built by those promoters. But let's not crown them kings just yet. Without the athletes, they've got nothing but empty stadiums and silent echoes. Quite right, babe. But this commercialization, it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, it brings in resources, attention, and development. On the other, the purity of sports, the raw competition, risks being overshadowed by the jingle of coins and the flash of advertisements. Tennis has evolved, but at what cost? Football tells a similar story. The beautiful game, they call it, but the beauty often lies buried under contracts and sponsorships. The role of players and the game itself should not be diminished. After all, it is the game that brings joy, not the commercials in between. Let's not forget, this influx of capital has a positive side. It broadens the reach, bringing sports to communities that were previously excluded. It provides facilities, training, and opportunities to those who dream. But Arnold, how do you ensure that the essence, the soul of golf, remains untouched amidst this commercial whirlwind? Bill, preserving the essence comes down to the athletes themselves and the communities around them. Promoters will chase where the money leads. It's up to us, the practitioners and lovers of our sports, to keep the flame alive, to remind the world why we play, why we watch, why we care. A riveting discussion showing the nuanced chess game between preserving the purity of sport and embracing the inevitable commercial tide. The balance is precarious, but essential for the future of all sports, boxing included. Our fighters, Ali and Frazier, stood as titans not just in the ring, but as icons in a vastly commercial arena, illustrating the complex dance between athlete, promoter, and the global stage. Let's dive into the world of what ifs. Bill, kick us off. How do you think boxing history might have been reshaped had Ali lost to Frazier? Well, remember, Ali's charisma wasn't just about winning. It was about how he faced adversity, how he stood up for his beliefs. If he had lost, sure, the initial narrative might have changed. Maybe we'd see Frazier as the unbeatable titan for a while. But Ali, he was more than just a boxer. His legacy, it goes beyond the ring. The man fought for civil rights, refused to go to Vietnam, a loss, it's a minor footnote in a much larger story. I gotta jump in here, Bill. You're painting a pretty picture, but let's not sugarcoat it. A loss is a loss. In baseball, when you're in a slump, the crowd lets you know. They're brutal. Ali losing to Frazier could have been devastating. It would have certainly dimmed his star, at least for a time. It's about how many times you get back up, sure, but each knockdown leaves a mark. And don't forget the mental aspect. Losing a fight of that magnitude could have severely impacted Ali's psyche. In tennis, a loss can shake your confidence to its core. You start questioning your training, your strategies, everything. Ali was resilient, but he was human. Who knows how it would have changed his approach in future fights. Losses teach you. In football, a defeat pushes you to analyze every aspect of your game. If Ali had lost, maybe he would have come back stronger, more strategic. His physical training might have intensified. 
perhaps we'd have seen an even greater Ali emerge, one who had to claw his way back to the top. I think we're missing a broader perspective on the impact beyond Ali himself. The global popularity of boxing, the push for larger-than-life sporting events, much of it was fueled by Ali's charisma and his clashes with Frazier. An Ali loss could have altered the sport's trajectory, maybe even dampened the spectacle of future boxing matches. An intriguing collection of perspectives. It's clear that the outcome of such a fight carries weight far beyond the immediate win-loss record. It's about legacy, personal growth, and the broader impact on the sport itself. Let's remember, in the grand scheme, every setback, every victory shapes the course not just of the individual athlete, but of the entire sporting world. As we draw this roundtable to a close, I remind each of you to reflect upon the profound impact of the Ali Frazier fight, not just as a moment in sports history, but as a catalyst for broader cultural and societal discussions. Your final thoughts, please. Looking back, Ali and Frazier were more than boxers. They were symbols of their time, embodying the struggles and aspirations of many. In basketball, you learn the necessity of adapting strategy mid-game, much like Ali adapted his approach to boxing over the years. It's about reading the opponent, understanding the game's evolution, and never standing still. It's funny how history remembers you. You can hit all the home runs you want, but it's the courage to stand back up after a strikeout that defines you. Ali and Frazier showed us that. In the ring, they were titans. Outside it, humans with flaws and virtues. Their legacy? It's about resilience. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. I see their fight through the lens of pressure, the kind that comes with being under the public eye. In tennis, every serve, every volley is scrutinized. Ali and Frazier face this on an unimaginable scale. Their physical preparation, mental fortitude, and the ability to perform under the highest stakes are what separate the legends from the rest. The beauty of sports lies in its ability to inspire, to bring joy and to unite. Ali and Frazier did more than compete. They captured the world's imagination, much like football does. Their enduring influence is a testament to their greatness, but also to the power of sports as a universal language that can bring people together, irrespective of their backgrounds. Their legacy, indeed, transcends boxing. It's about inspiring the next generation to aim higher, push further. In golf, like in boxing, it's not just about the technique, but the heart. Legends are not just remembered for their victories, but for the spirit they bring to the game, their character, their ability to change the course of their sport, and by extension, impact society. Thank you, panelists. This discussion has highlighted the multifaceted legacy of the Ali Frazier fight, far reaching beyond the confines of the boxing ring. It's clear, the dynamics of sports, the physiological demands on athletes, and the ever-evolving strategies play a crucial role in shaping not just champions, but the very sports they excel in. Your insights today have provided a rich tapestry of viewpoints, reflecting on how Ali and Frazier's monumental bout resonated across different sporting disciplines and aspects of society. It echoes the enduring truth that sports serve as a mirror to society, reflecting our collective hopes, struggles, and the relentless pursuit of greatness.